figure this is just as good a time as anything else to tell you guys what I got going on. We're gonna try to get back in here on the clearing job that I did back in January, it's now November. Um, we punted on it all summer long because the next step is to come in and start digging the pond. And of course, as you know, the dump truck still is not fixed. Still, yeah. <laughs> I guess that's what happens when you take it to a shop that says they're transmission experts, I don't know. Anyway, so a little bit new adventure here today. Um, I have rented mats. You guys watched my older videos and saw the old dig mats that I had. Those are all busted, rotten, and gone now. So the hope is that I can get in here in a week, no more than two. Two is what the client has approved because he's helping split the cost of the mats. Um, so hopefully no more than two. To get in here, and the plan is to get all the berm piles cleaned up and consolidated. So here's what's left of the northwest one. The no uh, south, or sorry, northeast. The southwest one is over there. I've got to get the burn piles consolidated to one. I've got to get all of my log piles consolidated to one. And we're going to start opening up the pond, which is going to be right over in hereabouts. But I'll show you what I had to battle with for now. Um, it was so hectic and so much excitement when these mats showed up. I didn't even have time to think about setting up the camera. So I had my heavy hauler come up yesterday. He was coming anyway to pick up the dump truck to send it back to the shop. And so I said, hey, since you're coming up from Houston anyway, can you go by and pick up these rental mats for me? Oh, man. Woo, you could not work in here without mats. Oh, I knew I'd need the mats. I was certain of it. Man, that's some squishy shit. Pardon my language. Anyway, so he, I said, bring me my mats while we're at it. So he said, that's all good. So the night before, actually, I paid two neighbor boys to throw tires down. And we walked the machine <coughs> from my house, which is around the corner that way, down the road here and parked it here. The next day he shows up with the mats and we offloaded them here on the, on the culvert. And just now today, I've started stepping them in and uh, I got, went and got diesel this morning. Had to find a new diesel supplier because my off-road diesel vendor that I was going to decided they would just stop selling to the public. They still will deliver and charge you a fee for that or a minimum, but you can't go there and fill up your own barrels. Anyway, so I wanted to wait till I got in here and got a little bit established and felt better because what's really been hectic is these right here. You guys know what those things are. Those scare the daylights out of me and I had to work right underneath of them. There was no getting around it. And then a two, the client here, just last weekend um, set these nice new fence posts. Now he set them about 14 foot apart so that I could track between them. But of course I got off in here and swung around the tail weight and took out that one. Luckily it's big steel pipe. I didn't bend the post any, just busted the concrete. So we'll reset his post. I'll get him a sack or two of concrete and it'll be like it never happened. I did shovel some of his rock in here on accident with the mats because I slid a few of the mats. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not kidding. My legs are still shaking a little bit. My, my butt's a little puckered up because I had to do a lot of work underneath that line and that just drives me crazy i hate the thought of it i hate to have to do it but there was no getting around it our other access that we normally come in on here is um over on the west property line through the trees there but it's his curvy little drive driveway that he wants to keep uh as his long-term driveway and he wants to keep that curvy kind of closed in uh <laughs> nature of it <coughs> there was no way i was getting in there with these 16 foot long mats uh, there's about 13 foot of clearance is the tightest point between two trees. So I told him, I, you know, we're going to have to come in, which he was okay with this. This is just a row thinning in these rows of pine, um, but it's about mm, almost 30 feet wide. So it's plenty to get these mats in here. And I'm trying to do my part, being environmentally friendly here. I haven't scuffed any trees yet. Um, I've managed to work around all these little saplings, which he'll probably end up bulldozing when he puts actual road in here. I don't know. Uh, I think the only thing I've busted so far was I wiped out a Chinese tallow tree that I'm parked on top of right now. But those are fair game because those are trash trees if you ask anybody. Anyway, I'm going to keep on matting my way in. My goal for right now is just to get out into the clearing where I've got some safe room to work. Because right now it is still a little tight working between these trees. You can see I'm favoring this side as far as swinging. And I'm swinging around to this side. Um, just making sure I keep enough space off of those trees. I think when I get up here a little further it looks like there's a couple of bigger tallows there and there i'm probably gonna have to knock those out with a mat i mean i'll swing a mat through them and just see if they survive great if they don't oh well um there's plenty of them around here so that's not a problem anyway 
let me keep on flipping these mats in here and at least get out into the clearing. That's my goal for now. because I did it so many times at my own place. These are rental mats, so I'm being very, very careful. I've already put a couple splinters on a few of them, and I hope they're going to be... I hope they'll be understanding and not charge the crap out of me for a couple splinters. Woo! How's that for swinging a 3,300 pound mat right at your face? The place I got these from called them crane mats. I've always called them timber mats, but I guess the dimensions, depending on what dimensions they are, they think they're a different purpose. So they said the eight inch <coughs> thick were the timber mats or the dig mats. I don't really care what you call it, I just need some mats. Let's see if I bump another pine tree here as I come around. It's a little tight right here, because... Oh, yeah, it feels like I got another one. Oh, no, I didn't. I thought I did. But these are uh, four feet wide, 16 feet long, and 12 inches thick so they are a more durable mat which I appreciate they're heavier than a dig mat obviously they got an extra four inches of material so they are heavier but they're more durable than the eight inch mat I'm not as scared about breaking a tie on them and as far as ground pressure is concerned you know the mats that extra little bit of weight doesn't add a whole lot where you really get your advantage of using mats is getting your machine across as many mats as possible so this machine obviously those of you guys that understand ground pressure know this but my machine has a ground pressure of about five and a half psi on its tracks um, by sitting across three mats each individual mat has a ground pressure of like 0.4 PSI or something like that. So even though you're adding 10,000 pounds to the equation, you're spreading the weight across three times the surface area. So the effective ground pressure that I'm working on now is like, I figured it up at like 2.3 PSI or something like that. It's actually less than my human footprint. And it's funny, you know, because I obviously I walked in across that area that I just showed you guys walking on it on foot you feel it squishing like a marshmallow but you can see looking back on where I've walked through it there's hardly any impression in the ground at all there's a little flat spot in the weeds man it's tight right here it was terrible out there by the road too because it was again under the power lines and then there was a little oak tree so it was just all around it was just a mess I can get in here. Oh, tallow. Woo! Spared it so far. Trying to make sure I keep a couple feet off those pines so I don't scuff anymore. Okay, enough chit chat. Well, I'm finally where I need to be 
to start digging. There's the original access road that we talked about. Here's the southwest burn pile that I've shoved up a little bit of, but good God, it's a sloppy wet mess out here. I knew it would be, but whew, you know, you just try to tell yourself it won't be somehow. Oh, freaking mud. Yeah, it ain't pretty. But in reality, it's not a whole lot worse than how it could have been. Of course, if I'd have come in here without mats, I would have never got to here. I'll walk you back on the mat where I came in here just a second, but here's where we're going to start digging the pond. And what I want to do to start off is reach over here and grab some of this crap, for lack of a better term, that's just topsoil. And I'm going to throw it over here on this side with the burn pile to get it out of my way. About four feet down, I should hit a much thicker, denser clay. And even though it's going to be wet because water's going to be running all over the place, it's not going to be sandy and silty. So it will pack and it will set up quickly. That's what I'm after is that clay. And so I'm going to have to just do some sacrificial digging in this little puddle and get myself a little, you know, levee berm here kind of built up. And like I said, try to get down to that clay as quick as I can. And then I'll start stacking the clay in front of me and then start working around that way as I go. Once I get a little bit of a berm built up that I think will actually hold water out, I'm going to drop my water pump in here and start dewatering it while I'm digging it out. That's my plan. Which means I got to go home and get the water pump and then all oh, my wife will probably fuss at me that I'm wasting time and should have never done this. The usual stuff, you know, I love it. Let's see if I can fi oh, find my way oh, through this. Some of those mats sunk a foot. I never did lose any entirely, but there were some that went all the way down to the level of the grass. And like I said, this looks really choppy and bad. I'll admit that. But when it dries out, man, you run over that with a disc and it'll be just fine. Which, the question is, when it dries out. But, until it dries out, nothing else is going to come in here and happen unless I do it. So, it's not like I'm leaving a mess that somebody else has to contend with. Oh, came across here. This was relatively solid. You can tell where it was more solid because you see just matted down grass where the mats didn't sink. And then when you get into the really crappy stuff, you see no sign of grass. <laughs> Still bubbles popping up where I've compressed the soil. Uh, Push that pile up a little bit as I came past it. See, originally I told myself I was going to come right down between the trees the whole way, but I ended up cutting out on this corner just because I could, and that got me out from having to work between two rows of trees. Got a little scary here. These mats went down actually below the grade level. That made me a little squeamish. Oh. Yeah, man, I was feeling so good actually coming here through the woods when I made the first little bit because it was, you know, didn't sink nothing at all. And then once I got out there in the clearing, it just went to hell. I did snap off a couple tallows. I told you guys I probably would. I was trying not to, but they were too tall and they would get snagged up in my bucket and boom, as I spun around. I was able to work over top these little smaller trees, but these kept getting tangled, so I just got aggravated and snapped them. Okay, well that's about it. At least I'm into where I can start making some progress now. That was my, my real goal for now. i go home and get some lunch. And I did drop a few mats and big puddles of water so my pants are soaking wet. And it's about 50 degrees today and windy. So go home, maybe put on some dry pants and come back over here and get after it. That is the plan. <laughs>